you can share your slides, Barbara, and start your session. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not sure I am able to share them. You should be able. You are simultaneously. Un participant à la fois. Pour... It's only one who can um, share at the same time. Yeah, I'll, I stopped sharing. So okay, so it should be good. Yes. Now you should be able to see my screen. Yes. Uh, please put it to full screen then. Mm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to put it in okay. full screen because else everything is going to be a bit more problematic. So if you don't mind, I'm okay. just keeping it like that. Okay, please okay. go ahead and start. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, I'm very happy to be here. It's my first time attending Open Education Global, but I had the privilege to attend uh, the first French special edition of Education uh, Open Education Global last week, and uh, it was really full of highlights. So. I'm uh, really very looking, very much looking forward to attending this this week. And today I would like to share some uh, work I'm currently doing and for which I have questions and I hope to find some answers with you. Um, because um, in relationship to the um, to, to Robert Farrow's uh, presentation um, with my colleague Daniel Schneider, we have also been working on an open textbook on educational technology methodology, which we have uh, put on an, on the Edutech Wiki some years ago. I think it was uh, back in 2014. And of course, it is improving. For instance, the last uh, things we have added to it is about uh, open research data and how to manage uh, open uh, data. So it's the, the format of the wiki enables the upgrading uh, and the, the coming in of the bringing in from everybody. So I am working in um, research methodology. I am from the University of Geneva, the unit of educational technology, which is part of the Faculty of Psychology and Educational Sciences. And um, yes, I my research topic is open, is uh, research education. So um, today the, um, purpose of the study I am presenting here is about uh, design, open education design for research education. And I think everything is open today, everything is possible. And the question is, how is it possible to design open education training in research education with a sustainable infrastructure that leads to recognition for learners. In other words, how is it possible for learners to capitalize on the efforts they are bringing in, putting in when they are following a training so that they can value this in, uh, in their PhD path. The structure of the presentation is um, quickly this one. So first I will tell you some words about the nature of the study, then come to the European Commission framework to adopt open education, define recognition and suggest a design process and then ask you some question. So the nature of the study, it is really uh, conducted in a scholarship of teaching and learning perspective. So I don't know to what extent you are familiar with this uh, approach, but uh, basically in the 90s, Boyer developed this approach for practitioners, for teachers basically, who wanted to, to improve their practice and who were looking for tools for tools from researchers, from scholars to improve it. And before improving it, of course, it was about um, understanding it 
researching, investigating how the practice was um, conducted to maybe better understand it and then be able to improve it. So what part of practice is examined in this study? Well, uh, as I have already told, it's about research education and uh, more specifically research methodology training. So it is really very much linked to the um, Robert's uh, presentation. And the issue is that we have noticed that PhD students have needs in terms of methodological uh, training, but that these needs differ really a lot from one student to the other. And we thought that maybe it would be possible with open education design to cater for this individual need in a timely manner. And so the question is uh, how to design open education training. So in this uh, individual manner and in a manner also that a training is recognized in the PhD path so that the learner can uh, value this training. Well, the framework from the European Commission, I am sure you are all familiar with. It is basically about 10 dimensions, uh, the um, six dimensions that are in the center are the openable uh, basic dimensions, pedagogy, recognition, collaboration, research, access, and content. And we are working on recognition. And the four uh, peripheral transversal are more transversal dimensions, which deal with policy, technology, quality, leadership. So we are very much into recognition. And how is recognition defined in this framework? Well, first of all, it is important to notice that it has two meanings. It is a process of issuing a certificate uh, which has formal value, but it is also a process of acknowledging and accepting credentials issued by a third party institution. So um, there is also a thing about, of course, a set of learning outcomes, which must have been achieved by a learner and which is assessed by a competent body against a predefined standard. And of course, this is important for the student because uh, it enables him to transition from non-formal to formal education or uh, simply to the job market. So the core components that we have extracted are the following one. We have uh, on one side the institutional level and uh, within at the institution level we have the formal processes to accredit or acknowledge and the competent bodies and at the learning design level we have the set of learning outcomes which must be defined achievements by the learners and predefined standards according to which the um, the certification is issued. So this is the design process we are suggesting and uh, for which I would like some feedback from you. At the learning design level, we suggest to work with two frameworks. The first one is about is from uh, Timmermans and Mayer and is um, about threshold concept. It is called Integrated Threshold Concept Knowledge. And uh, this one is very promising, I think, because um, within research education, threshold concepts have been really studied. There is a vast literature on this, and it seems to be, um, to be, um, sorry, when teaching with, with threshold concepts, it seems to be uh, efficient. And the other framework is uh, the TPAC by Michler and Kohler. And this one is important because it shows also how the three dimensions, the technological, pedagogical and content dimensions are entangled. And in research education today, I mean, it is obvious that um, the range of competencies that a doctoral student needs to develop are um, related to all three 
domains. So this is for the learning design level and for the institution level, we uh, suggest to draw back on the Bologna Open Recognition Declaration and uh, so at, at the policy level and at uh, the practical level, so how to concretely uh, develop badges on Clemens and colleagues' work. So um, the badging framework would be like that. First, it is um, about designing training modules. So this is the learning design level. Also at the learning design level, we have to design actually the badge to certify the learning outcomes. So which learning outcomes for which badge. And then at the institution level, and here is where the question really comes, is uh, to publish the badge and the training module. So how, my question starts here, how to choose technology? Of course, there is this public, private, in-house, developed technology, etc. But how to, to choose a technology that is compliant with open education recognition and institutional readiness? By institutional readiness, I speak of my own institution that is going to issue the badge, but also um, I am speaking of other institutions that potentially receive the student and uh, should certify and acknowledge the badge. And this leads to other questions. Do you um, use open education recognition? And if yes, how do you use it conceptually and technologically speaking? And more generally speaking, how open, um, how ready is your institution and your society in terms of open education? For instance, here at um, the Faculty of Psychology and Ec Educational Sciences, we have what we call Validation des Acquis d'Experience, which is um, taking into account exper previous experiences uh, when you are enrolling in continuing education um, training, for instance. And this is a kind of open education uh, recognition, but Concretely, very concretely, how is it on your side? Um, how far is open education recognition in your institution? So uh, I would like to open the floor here for questions and thank you for your attentions. Thank you very much, uh, Barbara. Um, I I haven't seen any questions uh, yet, um, but I do. I do have a, a remark, and and, and um, what we see is, uh, at least in my university, we're working towards the another way of, of recognizing uh, the efforts of, of, of teachers and uh, researchers instead of only looking at uh, at their number of publications, but also. Uh, taking uh, in account uh, what kind of impact they have. And I think that aligns quite nicely with uh, what you're doing here. Uh, so also uh, recognizing them for open textbooks, for uh, making a MOOC, uh, things like that. And I think that's, uh, that might be uh, a, a link to this. Um, so I see a question uh, from uh, Sean. How would engaging in mentorship and other informal training play into what you're working on with batches and other formal recognitions? I am not sure I get the question. Do you mean that um... I could get some mentorship from other universities or in one sense, are you thinking about mentorship? I, if I think that if I, if I translate the question, um, it is, um, do you also get recognition for being a mentor and helping others? Uh, no, 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 not yet, not yet. And not, uh, uh, to my knowledge, not uh, also in the direction you were just uh, telling William. And, uh, and, and in addition to, uh, to what I just said, uh, uh, my colleague Ingrid Voss, uh, she's also part of the conference, 
is actually leading efforts on this topic at TU Delft. So you could contact her oh, via great. Connect. Okay, and then I you. see another question from Su Ming. Um, uh, and a comment, uh, appreciate the blending of uh, ITCK and TPAC, and I'm interested in the content aspect and, and sharing my experience from Ireland. My institution is not ready, but there are some colleagues who are forward looking and pioneering in practice. Great, looking forward to getting in touch with you, Sue. Yeah. And I see that there are more comments coming in into the chat, so uh, you should look after that. Are there any other questions? Um, uh, so I assume you will share your slides on the Connect platform? Yeah. Yes, so yes, I, I will. I will share the, reshare the link for everyone. And if there are no other questions, then we can uh, close this session. No other questions? No, I don't see any other questions. So uh, please stop the recording.